Starting soon, the Monday Market Highlights podcast will be exclusively available on Milford's new podcast channel called On Track with Milford. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out on any episodes. You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 19th of June and I'm Roland from Milford. It was a busy week on the economic front. However, the key news was the anticipated hawkish pause by the US Fed. The US Central Bank decided to keep rates on hold. However, they did point to at least two more rate hikes to come. Many are taking this as a sign they are at or near pausing permanently, not necessarily believing that there will be, in fact, more hikes. In addition, the Fed increased their GDP growth forecast for this calendar year as the economy has held up much better than feared. This was aided by slightly softer US inflation data. Headline inflation grew 4% year-on-year versus 4.1% expected. Core inflation, which excludes volatile items like energy, increased 5.3% in line with expectations. The monthly core inflation growth of 0.4% is still well above the Fed's target. However, the PPI data was also released, which was weaker than expected at negative 0.3% month-on-month versus negative 0.1% expected. This generally leads inflation, so the market has taken the Fed pause, the inline inflation, and weaker PPI data as a sign the worst of inflation and rate tightening is behind us. Finally in the US, retail sales also came in slightly better than expected at positive 0.3% month on month versus negative 0.1% expected. Closer to home, Aussie employment was released and was much stronger than anticipated, with 76,000 jobs added versus 15,000 expected. The participation rate also increased to a record high, but despite this, the unemployment rate fell to 3.6%. Strangely, hours worked was very weak, falling 1.8% month on month. New Zealand GDP data was released, which showed the economy contracted for a second straight quarter, which is generally the loose definition of a recession. GDP contracted by 0.1% quarter on quarter, and the December quarter contraction of 0.6% was revised upwards to negative 0.7%. The Bank of Japan released their interest rate decision and kept rates on hold at negative 0.1%. There has been essentially no change in approach by the Bank of Japan despite a new governor being in the seat. Turning to equity news, CSL released updated guidance for FY23, which was roughly in line with consensus. However, the focus was on their maiden FY24 guidance. This was much softer than anticipated, with the company expecting to grow earnings by 10-14% to compared to market estimates of around 24%. This saw CSL fall 7% on the day, and it finished down 9% over the week. AGL hosted a strategy day and updated their guidance, which saw consensus upgrades. This saw AGL jump 10% on the day. Region, the shopping centre REIT, updated their property valuations, which saw valuations fall by 1.7% for the six months to June. The weighted average cap rate expanded to 5.85%. Charter Hall and their listed vehicles also released updated property valuations. Offices fell 3.7%. Long Whale Retail fell 7.8% and shopping centres fell 2.5%. Their industrial and social infrastructure assets increased by 0.1% and 0.8% respectively. Zero updated their pricing of their ANZ suite of products with an approximately 10% weighted price rise. This should lead to modest consensus upgrades. Domino's Pizza came out with a weak trading update, highlighting a softening consumer. Although like for likes were positive, they were much lower than their target 3-6% per annum. The market is concerned about their elevated net debt to EBITDA ratio of three times given the macro headwinds. To resolve some of these concerns, Domino's is exiting their loss-making Denmark business. Domino's fell 6% on the day. Finally, Macquarie Telecom raised $160 million to fund future data centre developments, citing strong demand for co-located DC services and that they're expecting strong demand from AI compute, albeit this is yet to appear. Looking to the week ahead, it's lighter on the economic front. However, we do have the Bank of England interest rate decision where they're expected to raise rates to 4.75%, UK and Japanese inflation data, and finally, the RBA meeting minutes, which should provide some clarity on how the RBA is thinking about inflation and monetary policy. Outside of this, we do expect more trading updates to filter through as companies have the majority of their financial year trading under their belt. If they are deviating too much from stated guidance, they will need to update the market. This provides timely insights to how the economy is evolving and absorbing the record rate hikes we've seen in Australia. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, 
This podcast is moving to Milford's new podcast channel. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out.